Well, the issue is that actually our charity is very well run. We've had 19 years of clear audits and every quarter government auditors are with us, uh, government appointed auditors, and they report back to government on the expenditure in relation to the children the government funds, but also what we do with them. So these allegations that the charities poorly run are absolutely inaccurate. I think what's happened is I've repeatedly raised the alarm about child protection issues and most recently brought the Centre for Social Justice in to evidence failings in relation to child protection and child mental health. They produced a 416-page report, the conclusion of which was that the child protection and child mental health system in this country needed a root and branch redesign because it wasn't fit for purpose. And because I've been very vocal and challenged government, I think I've just simply been a difficult person to have around. I'm not compliant, I'm not servile, and I'm very outspoken. And I think they find that difficult to tolerate. And that's why they're asking me to move. You've had massive support from the government, not least from the Prime Minister, David Cameron, who's very publicly come out and backed Kids Company. The charities received, what, £25 million from the government over the past, what, five or six years. It's a huge, vast sum, so clearly they have backed you in the past. Something's changed. What is it? You think it's a witch hunt against you for speaking yes. out? You, you put it down to yes, that because there I are, do, th there because are, there are exactly others. There your are, point. There are others, though, that have also criticised the organisation. One lady who donated the largest sum that the charities received from one person, two hundred thousand pounds. She was so upset with what the money was done, what what was done with the money, that she wanted it back. Uh, first of all, that lady alleged that we didn't thank her when she gave us a donation. That is not true. We've got copies of her thank you letters here. We also acknowledged her in our newsletter through a full page. We fully reported back to her. The Charities Commission approved her report. So the allegations that she is uh, throwing at us are completely untrue. And the Spectator had written that article without even coming to check with us those facts. I have all the copies of not only the reports to this lady, her thank you letters, but also the kids gave her personalised gifts. So her allegations are not true at all. Now you set up this charity 20 years ago and no one could argue you've done a huge amount of good. But do you think that the size of the organisation has become such that it's perhaps unwieldy for yourself to run? Do you think perhaps things could have been done differently, that maybe mistakes have been made along the way? Because you're dealing with vast sums here every year that you and others, of course, you don't do it on your own, but you do have to oversee a lot of money and make sure that every penny is well spent. First of all, I don't uh, run the organization on my own. There's a senior management team. There's a board of trustees. We are rigorously independently evaluated. We have incredible partnerships, scientific partnerships. Research bodies are here. We are actually the most audited organization there is. And I would argue with you that we run an incredibly sophisticated environment. There are 10,000 volunteers here every year, 500 clinical students on placement, 650 staff and 36,000 children, young people and vulnerable adults. If there'd been any trouble, any of the professional bodies dealing with a staff that get registered under them, psychiatrists, occupational therapists and so on, would have been able to come and inspect us. In fact, London School of Economics spent six months with us. Their report concluded that staff satisfaction, productivity, was at the rate of 92 to 97 percent. The difficulty Kids Company has is it doesn't have enough cash for the caseload that is arriving at its door. Kids are telling each other, and we've ended up with children and young people who are very destitute sometimes, incredibly desperate. Just a couple of days ago, one of our young people had thrown himself in front of 
uh, traffic. These are very, very, some of them very unwell individuals. And a charity is being left to care for them through cupcake sales and cocktail party fundraising. This is wrong. The real conversation That's not strictly we true, have is it? You have huge corporate backers. So you have huge corporate backers. The government also, of course, funds the social services and they we, give vast amounts to you. And people, you know, it's not just cupcakes. That's not really painting a true picture of how you raise funds. You have, what's your budget? Was well, it 20 well, million? Well, it is, a year? no, actually, no. Hold on. It's 24 million, but even if we have a large corporate backer, we have to go to all the events that they're organizing. These monies don't come in lump sums. Well, all they're fundraising work. events at the various banks that give us money. Yes, and I, I believe that the bit of our functioning that is charitable related should be uh, funded by us. But I also believe that the bit of our function that is statutory related, i.e. we shouldn't have clinical responsibility for very ill individuals. I shouldn't have to hire psychiatrists, social workers and psychiatric nurses to manage a caseload that should be handled by the NHS or by child protection. That is where we're spending a lot of money. And I am worried that if we don't manage to fundraise, that we're leaving these children and young people precariously uncared for. And that's why I have continuously urged government to come in and take some proper responsibility for this caseload. So you've effectively been pushed out by the government. How are you feeling today? Um, I have a very clear heart and I am very at peace with myself because I've worked 30 years with some of the most exceptional and extraordinary children and young people. I know that I've tried my best and consequently, I don't feel perturbed personally, but I am very concerned and remain concerned by the fact that we're not having the real debate. The real debate is the catastrophic child protection failings and governments inadequate approach to this and the brushing under the carpet that is resulting in children having to survive on their own unaided in conditions that shouldn't be happening in one of the richest countries of the world. That is what's exercising me. My personal situation doesn't exercise me because I know I gave it my best.